Hello, this is Rick Arnish. I'm the executive director of the High Speed Rail Alliance. Um, I wanna thank you all for uh, joining us today for an exciting program about the uh, fantastic effort uh, moving forward to get trains linking uh, Chicago in Peoria along a long missing part of the state uh, rail program. Um, uh, we've got two exciting guests in Secretary LaHood and Mayor Ali. Uh, we'll introduce those in a second. First, uh, to a little bit of background for those who are new to the Alliance. Um, we are a member supported organization. We're working to help local uh, you, individual members and local leaders um, understand the benefits of fast, frequent and dependable trains, uh, why we need to build them, what steps we need to take to, in order to happen. And then we strive to provide the tools that uh, local leaders can use to uh, educate mem uh, leaders in state capitals and in the federal capital about why we need an aggressive program to expand our rail network. Um, we believe in the integrated network approach, which in connects entire regions together um, with a combination of shared use tracks with freight trains, regional lines where you're upgrading existing tracks to be focused on frequent passenger trains. And that, um, that little 20, 10 to 20% of the network that really brings the, the boost to the party, new dedicated high-speed lines that really change the game for the rest of the system. Um, in order to do this, we need um, state, regional, and a federal plan to understand where each of these pieces goes together and how they go together and how to phase them. And California is the first to have put together this type of plan in the United States. And we're hoping that other states will follow their lead and then encourage the federal government to do the same. Um, today, um, we want to thank our sponsor, Patrick Engineering. Uh, they did an excellent job of doing this uh, first feasibility study for the Chicago to Peoria project. And we're very happy that they have chosen to sponsor this program today, uh, Patrick Engineering. And uh, next I'll introduce uh, Chris Ott, our deputy director up in Madison, Wisconsin, in order to introduce um, our guests today. Thanks, Rick. And it's a pleasure to introduce uh, first an elected official whose leadership on this issue we appreciate so much. Uh, after serving two years as an at-large city council member, Dr. Rita Ali was elected mayor of Peoria in April of 2021, uh, becoming the city's first woman and first person of color to serve in that role. Uh, mayor Ali is, a leading, is leading a bipartisan multi-region effort to bring passenger train service to Peoria and central Illinois. She wants to put Peoria on the pathway to become a smart city, and she's working with key stakeholders to equip Peoria citizens with high demand workforce skills and local careers. Also with us today is another leader with unique experience and perspective, uh, Ray LaHood, a, Peor a Peoria native who served as a Republican in the Illinois House of Representatives in the 1980s, and then in the US House of Representatives from 1995 to 2009. In that year, he was appointed and confirmed as U.S. Secretary of Transportation, and he served through President Obama's first term. Uh, thanks to you both uh, for joining us, and let me turn things over to you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, Rick and Chris, for having us. Uh, we've certainly learned a lot uh, from you both uh, within the High Speed Rail Alliance in terms of this process that we've been going through for the the past year. So I do have a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation that Secretary LaHood and I will go through and then uh, it's going to be fairly brief, kind of given a background, a historical perspective on how we started this journey. And then afterwards, we're happy to uh, engage in discussion and answer any questions that you may have. So I'm going to share my screen here. Okay. So in terms of the case for Peoria to Chicago passenger rail 
corridor. This journey really started uh, last summer, 2021. Um, I've been wanting to see passenger rail uh, from Peoria. We have to currently drive to either Bloomington or Galesburg in terms of the closest locations for an Amtrak train station in order to get to Chicago, which is a hub that leads you to other places throughout the nation. Uh, but, you know, it's been a long time um, goal of mine. And now, you know, after becoming the mayor, being in a position to try to work toward this goal, I had gotten a call from Representative uh, Darren LaHood to meet and talk about my um, my goals for the city, being a new mayor. And one of those goals that I shared was bringing passenger rail to Peoria, which he was certainly in favor of. Shortly after that, I would say one or two weeks later, I got a call from his father, um, Secretary Ray LaHood, who I had known throughout the years in, in various capacity, working on you know different projects and different interactions with people that we both know. And he said, Mayor, he said, uh, I know you talked to Darren. Uh, you know, uh, this is my area. How about we work together and bring high-speed rail to Peoria? And I said, I love it. You're on. Um, we actually put together a list of uh, individuals. I'm trying to get my... Uh, trying to adv advance here. Okay. We put together a committee um, that met for the first time in August of last year. And this is just a sample of some of the individuals that were invited to participate in this committee. Uh, we agreed on who might uh, serve on the committee and initial 20 key stakeholders within the city, as well as partners within the state legislature and IDOT, of course, Illinois Department of Transportation the city, the county, the Tri-County uh, Planning Commission, which is the, the MPO uh, within our area, the businesses represented by the Peoria Chamber of Commerce, the Economic Development Agency, which is the Greater Peoria EDC, as well as our hospitality, hospitality industry. But it also included Bradley University, um, the trades, um, and other key partners, key stakeholders within the city of Peoria. So we met uh, last August. We talked about why we would want passenger rail. What is the case for passenger rail and how would it better serve the Peoria area, the Peoria region? Not just looking at the city of Peoria, certainly looking at the city, but broader than that, looking at central Illinois, and how uh, this uh, opportunity could serve us. So we see it as a system to, um, as an opportunity to enhance our transportation system within uh, Central Illinois, provide an additional mode of transportation, but also uh, support growth and economic development, uh, such as what happened in the Bloomington Normal area. And Representative uh, Darren LaHood represents that area, and he talked about how it was certainly a game cha changer for that area. Uh, it would improve regional connectivity, uh, promote more opportunities for business and tourism, and of course, provide opportunities for those that may not have transportation, such as a car, and really be an equity opportunity for the people within our region. Of uh, course, uh, the Illinois Department of Transportation had to be a key partner. Uh, they were at the table. Uh, we talked about possible routes. We talked about a feasibility study. And fortunately, they came on board in having some funds to provide that feasibility study for us. Um, hired Patrick Engineering uh, as the... Um, the engineering service that would conduct the study. We actually, um, the funding was put in place and the study began in November of 2021. We thought maybe we could get done in February, that it could be a quick turnaround. It took a little bit longer than we had anticipate, 
anticipate it because it didn't actually wrap up until June. The IDOT feasibility study, um, it updated, it included looking at prior studies. Uh, we had tried to uh, pursue passenger rail in the Peoria area several times before, including uh, 2008, I believe, 2010, 2012. So there were some prior studies to look at, but there was not that strong ridership. And ultimately, the feasibility did not pan out in those cases. Um, in this case, we looked at going west. We looked at uh, going uh, a north to south route, but we looked at a route um, and decided on, landed on a route that was the old Rock Island Trail uh, from Peoria to Chicago, where there was actually existing rail in place, not in good shape. Some of it would have to be completely replaced, uh, but that was the route that we thought would be most feasible in serving Peoria and Chicago and some of the um, other cities on the proposed route, which would include LaSalle, Peru, Utica, where the state park is, uh, Morris, Illinois, and into uh, Joliet and into Chicago. So the study consisted of gathering a lot of uh, background information, a lot of data from prior studies, but also engaging our public uh, with a public interest study to see whether um, there was really strong interest in our area. The study, it says, was um, anticipated to be completed in April, but again, it wasn't completed until actually June. So this, is, this was the route that is being proposed for the corridor from Peoria uh, into um, Union Station in Chicago. I, I forgot to mention Ottawa. So we had we started with a public interest survey, which uh, Secretary LaHood will talk about. And ultimately that was part of the overall feasibility study that resulted in strong ridership, uh, strong feasibility in terms of moving forward with this initiative. And one of the milestones, one of the milestones that came out of that was getting this corridor into the Illinois state plan um, for passenger rail. And that's something that we anticipate either this quarter or the next, but it has been approved by the state. So at that point, I'll pass it on uh, to Secretary LaHood and just let me know when I need to move on to the next slide, Secretary. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you for uh, inviting us, um, Chris and Rick and whoever else has joined us. Um, we appreciate uh, all of your interest and we appreciate uh, really, uh, Rick, your expertise as we've uh, been involved in our discussions over the last year or so. Uh, you've been very helpful and we, we appreciate that very much. Um, one of the things that we realize when we talk about a rail service is there has to be significant ridership for Amtrak to consider um, operating rail service from Peoria to Chicago. So in order to really determine what kind of ridership, what level of interest there was, uh, we, we, did a, we did a survey and Mayor, I forgot who, who helped us with the survey again? It was uh, it called Images. They were a contractor yeah. of Patrick Engineering and Janet yeah. Henderson is the, the leader there. Right, so, um, and we did a survey all over central Illinois, not just in Peoria, but, but all over central Illinois. Uh, we surveyed students from Bradley University because we know the success of many of the uh, communities along the Chicago to St. Louis line um, rely on students attending ISU or uh, going all the way down to Southern Illinois University. And we wanted to really determine if Bradley students would, would use it. And uh, our survey came back very, very strong. Uh, Mayor, help me out here. Was it, uh, what percent was it that said they would ride the 
ride the train if it were affordable and available? Yes, we got an amazing 32,000 responses to the electronic survey and 95% of those respondents said that they would either very likely or likely use the service. Right, 95%. That, that's, that's quite extraordinary. And, and uh, we thought that was such a strong signal to uh, be able uh, to move ahead and make the case with Amtrak, with DOT, with US DOT, uh, that this you know, is not only a, a vision and a dream, but uh, would, would be a reality for the 95% of the people that answered the survey that said they would use uh, the train service. And uh, so we were, we were delighted with that. Any, anything else I should mention about the survey, Mayor, that, uh, that I missed? Only that it was totally electronic and, you know, people were able to use their, their phones. Um, they were able to go online. Uh, so they were able to access it in a number of different ways. Uh, but the response just was, was just tremendous. Okay, next slide, I guess. Okay, I'm trying to get it to go. Let's see. Sorry about that. There we go. And then um, as far as the, the cost, we know that developing rail service on um, existing rail lines uh, is not inexpensive. And um, so we um, also conducted another survey about where a train station should be in Peoria came up with um, two very favorable uh, alternatives. Um, one is uh, the old, uh, well, it's not the old, it's the current post office in downtown Peoria, uh, which is located next to WTVP. Uh, and the reason that um, we selected that was um, because um, been a lot of talk in the community about the Postal Service moving that location and making it available, the property available uh, for uh, whatever use the developer wanted. And so we thought that was a, a, a good site. We also looked at um, the, uh, the river station and the gateway building. And um, so we, we really landed on uh, the current post office if it eventually does uh, look like it's going to be vacated. Uh, and it's just, a, it's a very, very strong location. And the Gateway Building um, is a facility uh, also on the river and right next to the tracks uh, with a lot of parking in that area. Uh, so that those two were uh, the favored uh, sites that, um, that we're going to be recommending. Um, anything else on that, Mayor? Only that uh, Tri-County Regional Planning Service actually uh, provided a grant of $80,000 to pay for that um, study that looked at the site locations. Yeah, good. Okay, next slide. And then, of course, the establishment of the corridor. And one of the things that, that we really... Uh, emphasized all along the corridor is including as many communities as uh, we could uh, as stops along the way. And on that previous map, you saw that uh, we would include uh, communities uh, as large as Joliet, but also uh, as small as uh, Utica and uh, communities in between and including uh, Star Rock, which we know is a very popular destination for many, many people. And uh, so we do have a corridor designation uh, that includes lots of cities. And we have very strong support for every one of the cities that we included when the, when the mayor and I made the announcement about our plans. We not only made it in Peoria, but we went to Utica and we went to Morris. And we had tremendous turnouts from the business community and the the political community and both of those uh, very, very strong support. And we could have stopped on at every city and we'd have strong support. 
And, and the reason I say we have strong support is because <coughs> we, we now are, we've now embarked on the, on the uh, corridor uh, study uh, that uh, will uh, identify this corridor for DOT. And um, that study is uh, being conducted by a local engineering firm. But my point here is we asked the communities along the way if they would help us pay for this corridor identification study. And they've all stepped up very, very nicely. The city of Peoria will contribute $100,000. And uh, that was passed almost unanimously by the city council. Um, the county stepped up unsolicited because of our great friendship and relationship with Andrew Rand, the chair, and they'll provide 50,000. And then um, communities along the way uh, will provide funding um, and the, their combined funding, uh, funding amounts gets us to 250,000 and maybe even, maybe even 300,000. But we, we have the money we, we need to, and we've embarked upon the corridor identification uh, program that we need to submit to the U.S. Department of Transportation to really get on their radar and become a viable uh, uh, rail uh, operation and uh, program uh, within the U.S. Department of Transportation. Now, I know I left something out on that, Mayor, so fill in the blanks here. Well, I would just add that, um, you know, the FRA and IDOT have, are planning to uh, release this um, application opportunity to apply to become part of the corridor ID program, but it has not been released yet. Uh, they said fourth quarter. So we are in fourth quarter now. So we're expecting the application or NOFO um, RFP, whatever you want to call it, to come out, you know, any time now. Uh, I would expect that it's probably going to be out by November, uh, not for sure, but they said this quarter. So once we get that uh, release, we'll, you know, continue to work on our application because we want to be one of those corridors that's getting some uh, planning funds and technical assistance, and we want to be in the pipeline for the federal government. Uh, to select uh, the corridors around the nation. And Mary, one thing I left out was identifying the firm that's doing this uh, corridor identification application for us. Sure, the leading firms are uh, Patrick Engineering and Hanson Consulting. Uh, they are involving imaging and some other partners. Okay, is there another slide? Nope, that's it. Uh, yeah. Just any questions, uh, uh, Secretary LaHood yeah, and I are sure. open. Yeah, yeah. You're on mute, Rick. Uh, mute, okay. Uh, thank you very much. That, that was really uh, an excellent overview. Um, and I think the, the core point being uh, in terms of the discussion of, of how is you know, kind of putting together the community com committee, um, setting a specific goal and then building the, the committee that's involved as you go. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about what you experienced in, you know, submitting the first initial request for information and what you think the next steps are in terms of making this work? I, I would start uh, by saying that our leadership, passenger rail leadership group here in Peoria started with 20 people. And now we have about 60 people. And that's because we grew in terms of bringing in additional stakeholders, not just in the Peoria area, but those corridor cities uh, that are along the corridor uh, up north. So, you know, the mayor of Morris is there. Uh, the village president of the La Salle, Peru area. And so those representatives, state, there's some state representatives, there's some local chamber representatives, there's some MPO representatives. Of course, we have you, uh, Rick, as part of, you were there from the beginning, yeah. first as a consultant, but then really a part of, of the group, the High Speed Rail Alliance. And we've learned a lot from you. 
Uh, but we grew again from 20 to 50 because of the enthusiasm, everybody wanting to be a part of this, feeling that this is as good for our region as well as a potential economic driver uh, for our area. So there's a lot of enthusiasm uh, and we're gaining support along the way. You want to add to that, Secretary? Uh, well, uh, just uh, Rick, as you know from joining our calls, all of these people are on the calls. They're not just there in name only. They're, they're there uh, at every one of our monthly meetings. And <clears throat> when we asked them to join us at our press conferences, they turned out very nice crowds of people from all across their communities. So there's a lot of energy and enthusiasm all along the corridor. Absolutely, I've seen it. And um, I have personal enthusiasm because I love biking and hiking in the, along the Illinois Valley. And uh, I've long wanted trains to go there. And uh, to my trips to Peoria that I've made over the years, boy, wouldn't it be great if, if we could take the train. So um, I'm glad that there is this enthusiasm. Uh, um, and then, so um, what, um, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I spaced out. So Chris, do we have any questions online? And then maybe I'll, I'll remember. <laughs> Yes, we, uh, we do. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I, I know that when you're speaking, it's, it can be hard to follow along in the chat. So I wanted to let our presenters know that there's great enthusiasm for this uh, going on in the chat. Um, we also had uh, a couple of people ask to go back and see slides showing site locations. I didn't want to interrupt, uh, but I wanted to let everyone know that within a few days, we'll make a recording of this talk available. So anyone can come back for a closer look whenever you want. Um, and we, uh, you can go to our site, uh, hsrail.org slash events, and we, that's where we put the, uh, these recordings. Uh, but uh, for questions, um, Adrian Diaz asks, uh, would, elect would rail electrification be part of this proposal? You know, in terms of uh, once we get selected into the quarter identification plan, once we're able to move forward and work very closely, uh, with the Federal Railroad Administration and IDOT, I think that we're looking at, you know, uh, those possibilities and those um, possible recommendations. It's, I don't believe that it, that's ruled out. Um, and I do want to speak to the high speed aspect of this, because as many of you know, high speed, true high speed rail is about 200 miles per hour. And I don't know that that's taking place anywhere right now in the nation in terms of within the United States. It, it is taking place you know, outside of the US. But there's a desire to bring high speed rail as well as higher speed rail. And I think that's what we're really looking at with the Peoria corridor is not necessarily high speed, maybe not even um, up to 110 miles per hour, but initially, initially possibly uh, 89 miles per hour up to 100 miles per hour, and possibly at some point getting up to that 110 miles per hour. But right now we have nothing. So, you know, if we get that 89 initially, um, you know, it gets us to from Peoria to Chicago in less than three hours. And, and uh, back the other way. And we're not looking at just a one-way um, route. We're looking at bringing people from the north part of our state to into the Peoria area. So we're not just looking at, at again, a one-way track. Great. Uh, an anonymous attendee asks a couple of related questions. Um, do you, do you know yet who you want to build the trains uh, and or what kind uh, do you have in mind? Locomotive hauled coaches, unified train sets, multiple units. Uh, is that uh, part of where you're at at this stage? I, I'm gonna defer to the expert uh, secretary. Well, yeah, I, uh, Chris, I would say that um, we're not gonna reinvent the wheel here, so to speak. We're gonna use Amtrak and we've, we, we've had two two meetings with the CEO of Amtrak and uh, they'll be providing the service and we'll take, we'll take our cues from them in terms of 
uh, the kind of equipment and so forth. And uh, some of it will depend on the rehabilitation of the current uh, tracks and uh, what, what it can withstand. And, and uh, some of it will depend on our friends from the freight rail and the agreements that we can reach with them. And so um, to be determined. Fair enough. Uh, let's see, uh, David Phillips, one of our technical advisors asks, what would you think about extending the route uh, on from Chicago, uh, on the Chicago end onto O'Hare? Oh, I would love for us to see that happen. <laughs> you know, we've heard that uh, from uh, residents in our area that they would love to go from Peoria to O'Hare, not just downtown, because there's still a challenge. After you get downtown, you have to get to O'Hare if that's your destination. So, you know, right now we're where we are. Uh, I think that's another um, project <laughs> at some time uh, in the future, but we would love to go um, to O'Hare at some point. Uh, I love that that quote uh, that's in the chat uh, that we would go from zero to hero in no time flat, having nothing and, and moving. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> And then um, I want to uh, point out as an aside, uh, so Amtrak and Metra and IDOT and the county are working together to, uh, uh, on a federal grant that would allow the, uh, an easier connection from Union Station to O'Hare, and importantly, an easier connection from Juliet into Union Station than what was originally envisioned in the first study. Uh, that's called the Chicago Hub Improvement Program, and we did a webinar on that a couple, three weeks ago. Chris? Great. Um, moving along, uh, Dan Bilka asks, how are you partnering, partnering with your counterparts for other corridors throughout the state to elevate the support of rail projects in the Illinois State Legislature? Well, you know, I think we've been very supportive of the other projects within Illinois. Uh, Rockford has been working for a long time on passenger rail. Uh, the Quad Cities has been working. I have a close relationship with the mayors of both of those cities. Uh, we've assured them that our project is in any way, in no way in competition with those projects. In fact, we support uh, those projects. And so we've had some great uh, discussions with them and they're supportive. And, you know, it's really all about uh, working together um, to support our constituents in multiple locations. Well, Chris, it's no secret that, and, and I'm very proud of this, while I was secretary, we gave millions of dollars to establish the line between Chicago and the Quad Cities. The mayor's had uh, discussions with the Moline mayor about the project between Peoria and Chicago. Also very proud that uh, we gave $20 million uh, to our friends over in Normal to build an Amtrak station, a Tiger Grant, which transformed that neighborhood, which we use it as an example of what can happen. If you build it, they will come. Uh, that neighborhood was, was, was not that great a neighborhood. And today it's a fantastic neighborhood with the Children's Museum and uh, all kinds of other amenities there. So there's no lack of support from our end here on uh, what's going on elsewhere in the state. Great. Let's see. Um, Michael Podgers, who's a member of our Young Professionals Board, asks, uh, what entity owns the right of way for the corridor, and does that present a challenge to impl implementing this plan? Well, well there's several. Oh, uh, no, no, secretary. A, it doesn't make any difference. Um, look, at a, a lot of the rail is, uh, owned, some of it's owned by the freight rails, and we know we'll have to work with them and get shared agreements. and. Uh, I was involved in that when I was secretary with the uh, Union Pacific uh, along the corridor between Chicago and, and St. Louis. Uh, and uh, they, 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 they have priority over, over their uh, rails and uh, we understand that. And uh, so, uh, you know, we'll have to work with them to get the, the shared agreements. Okay. And um, this is, uh, I guess, a related question. Um, I mean, and maybe you're not there yet, uh, since you just mentioned Secretary, you know, working to get those agreements. But um, the question uh, is, what have been the reactions from the owners of the lines uh, up to the Illinois Valley and to Joliet? 
Um, say that again, Chris. I, I'm more than sure what you, what what's the point. Um, the question is, what have been the reactions from the owners of the lines up to the? We have, Chris. We area? haven't talked to them. We're just uh, you know we're just at the starting gate. Uh, okay. We've got to get a designation from DOT. Once that happens, uh, then we're off to the races and really start to do our due diligence with the with the owners of the you know with the freight rail folks. Okay. Thank you. And then we, we already talked a, a bit about uh, the exciting possibility of extending the line to O'Hare. Uh, what about in the other direction? Uh, that's what this question is about. What would it take to get this route extended to Springfield? <laughs> Go ahead, Mayor. No, I, I was just gonna say, we, we actually looked at uh, Springfield as well. There's certainly interests, um, especially, you know, there's a, a lot of people that work in Springfield that go back and forth from Peoria to Springfield. Um, you know, in terms of cost, this is a very a costly project, just what we have on our plate right now in terms of what we're trying to pursue. Um, it wasn't really, I think, um, feasible for us to add on Springfield to this project proposal. So for now, we have not done that, but hopefully sometime in the future, we can foresee that. I mean, the truth is Springfield does have good passenger rail between Springfield and Chicago, and they're building a completely new uh, area there for the train station and so forth. So I'd, I'd say Springfield's in pretty good shape uh, in terms mm -hmm. of getting to St. Louis or, or Chicago or points in between. Great. And uh, something that we uh, talk about a lot at the, and focus on at the High Speed Rail Alliance is the idea of an integrated network, integrating uh, fast trains with other forms of transportation. And this question uh, relates to that. Uh, it comes from Kevin, who asks, uh, are there plans to better improve public transportation between Bloomington Normal and Peoria? Uh, Kevin says, I was uh, in Bloomington Normal back in 2019 and was thinking of going to Peoria. There only seem to be a few coach buses a few times a day between these two very close cities. Uh, a BRT or other frequent bus service could help complement intercity service for both uh, both of those. Uh, is that uh, a possibility? That's something that we've been talking about within the city. Um, you know, it's it's all about ridership. For one, we do have um, a local charter service. It's called Peoria Charter um, Bus. I believe is the name of it. Um, that goes from uh, Peoria to Bloomington and, and back and forth. And so over time, there was some reduction in the number of buses that went both from uh, Peoria to Bloomington and ISU, as well as from Peoria to O'Hare. There's a reduction. There's been some reduction and some consolidation. So I think it's a matter of uh, increasing that ridership to be able, the demand has to be there in order for the charter service uh, to be, you know, supportive of that increase, but it's something that we, it is, you know, a part of our discussions, not in this particular group, um, but in other um, uh, meetings within the city and transportation authorities. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, we have, uh, as, as you'd probably expect, you know, there's lots of interest in the, in the timeline for this project. So I'm going to uh, sort of merge together a couple of questions uh, about that. Uh, what do you think is the, the best case timeline? How long will it take uh, for trains to be up and running? I, I'm going to start, uh, Secretary, if you don't mind, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. But I do want to say that in talking with Chris Coos, who's the mayor of uh, uh, Normal, Illinois, he shared with me in Chicago at a conference that it took seven years for them to get up and going. They had a lot of support from um, DLT with tire grants and, and other funding. It took him seven years to get that done all, he said, from beginning to the end. And, you know, I have to defer to the expert, uh, Secretary LaHood. It may take us a little bit longer. I, I think once we would get all the final approvals and sign offs, we're probably 10 years from riding a train from Peoria to Chicago. Okay. Are there a, a related question uh, was, are there, are there any um, in, impediments to, or I guess things, uh, are there any ways to speed that up? Because of course people are eager to ride this train. 
Well, we're talking about really completely redoing the, the infrastructure all along the corridor. And we're talking about entering into agreements with the freight rail. We're talking about partnering with Amtrak. And um, all of these things take time. Um, look at if it was up to the mayor and myself, uh, we'd be putting on people on trains today. But it, it, this, is, this is not inexpensive. We think it's today's dollars, $2.5 billion. And we think it probably takes 10 years to, to get people on a train. Thank you, and uh, and to balance that out, uh, there is uh, there's some enthusiasm in the chat for just not just this project, but the speed at which it's already moving. So, oh. wanted to share that. We wanted to share that as well. Um, uh, another uh, member of the audience asks, uh, "Have you given any thought to, or are you open to getting service from a private train operator like Brightline instead of Amtrak?" You know, we haven't really discussed that. I'm. Uh... I'm the co-chair of a high-speed rail coalition that's promoted California high-speed rail and getting money in the transportation bill. And uh, so I've, I've had lots of meetings with Brightline. I know them very well. They have a great project between Las Vegas and, um, and Los Angeles, and it, it really is a high-speed tra train, something I worked on when I was at DOT. And Brightline also has a very good project in Florida. Uh, but we, we've spent our time really on the fact that Illinois is primarily served by Amtrak. And we have been left out of that. If you look on a map of Illinois, there's no train service provided by Amtrak to Peoria. And we're, we're, we, we're gonna change that. And uh, so we've primarily focused all of our attention on Amtrak, as I said earlier. We've had two meetings with the CEO and. Uh, we know we know they're interested, and and we know that uh, you know they think we have a good plan. So um, we'll probably stick with Amtrak. Okay, thank you. Um, Bob Johnston asks: Have you had any discussions with Iowa Interstate? And this question comes in the context of concern about the level of cooperation between IDOT on the or with IDOT on the on the Quad Cities route. Look, and I am very, very familiar with what's going on in the Quad Cities. While I was at DOT, I not only provided the money for Chicago to the Quad Cities, but we ran into a terrible roadblock in Iowa. Terry Branstead, who was the governor, simply did not want to continue the route to Omaha. Uh, and uh, we faced that with other Republican governors. And uh, I'm, I'm not really up to speed on what's, what's happening in Iowa right now. Um, but um, there was a, a lack of enthusiasm and a lack of interest uh, during the time I was there. Now that that was ten years ago, and you know, hopefully that that has changed. But uh, I, I don't think it has because not not much progress has been made from the Quad Cities across Iowa. Okay. Thanks. Um... Adrian, Rick, uh, Rick, am I am I right on that, or has there been progress? Uh, he, um, yeah, I haven't seen any progress out of Iowa yet. Right, um, a little bit. Um, Iowa City did buy land that could be used for a train station, so I'm glad to see that they're moving forward. Uh, but in terms of the actual Iowa State, not the college, but the state of right. Iowa, I haven't seen a lot of movement yet, and that's something right. that we really need to to work on. Yep. Absolutely. All right, um, Adrian had another couple of questions. Um, uh, first is, how does this connect with the CREATE program? The federal you know, we really, the CREATE program um, is a huge, huge uh, project uh, that we provided a lot of money to and is still receiving money to untangle all of the congestion that goes on uh, with all of the freight rails that come in and the trains that come into Chicago, and we're 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 not a part of that. Okay, Rick, uh, uh, there are more questions, but did you know? Okay. Oh, keep going. Uh, 
All right. Uh, so uh, another question. Um, uh, the the mayor uh, mentioned the the condition of the tracks on that uh, that Rock Island Trail, the old Rock Island Trail. And uh, another question asks: um, has, has there been any consideration of using the Metro-owned Rock Island line? You know, we've talked to we've talked about Metro, but um, I think until we get our corridor designation, uh, we're going to you know probably hold off on some of those decisions. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Paul asks a question that uh, that comes again at uh, you know this this idea of uh, you know extending the service to O'Hare or you know further in in the other direction. And and you you both uh, you, you you've spoken already about the need to keep this focused for now. Um, but the, the the question anyway is um, does that kind of thinking you know going going further help or could it help the process of obtaining the federal or the financial grants needed from from different government entities? Is, is that Probably a not. I mean, I, I when I was a secretary, I worked with uh, then uh, Mayor Emanuel, who had a vision for a faster train. The, the truth is there is a train from downtown Chicago to, to O'Hare. It just, it goes at a snail's pace and stops uh, at every community along the way. And Mayor Emanuel's idea was to, to get a, a, a speedy train that does not stop and goes at a fairly fast speed uh, from O'Hare to downtown. And uh, I, I don't know that there's been much enthusiasm for that project since Mayor Emanuel left, uh, but um, it's, it's, it's a very, very costly project. Mayor Emanuel had talked to Elon Musk about his interest in uh, that project and funding it, and uh, but um, I, I don't think much progress has been made since. But I don't know, Rick. Maybe you have a different view of that. Well, uh, Metra has been very public about its desire to run frequent trains from either Ogilvy or Union Station to O'Hare. Um, so there has been significant. That's a big step. They have been talking about it. Amtrak has been talking about their desire to get to O'Hare. Um, so we're getting closer to, um, to actually getting consensus that it needs to happen. The challenge at this point is where does the station go to make it convenient for the passengers? Um, and we need uh, the Department of Aviation to take some leadership on that. And then, um, uh, Metro really wants to see the current flat junction at A2, at basically Western and Grand, um, grade separated. So the trains from Union Station fly over the trains from Ogilvy. And they think that that's an important step towards O'Hare. So there is discussion about it. Uh, and, and that's very exciting. Uh, the CHIP program that Amtrak is working on um, makes it practical to run trains through Union Station. Um, so if they get their grant funding and keep moving forward, that takes care of a piece of that. And then they're also talking about building a connection directly to the Rock Island route um, so that the trains could use the Rock Island from, from Union Station to, to Joliet. So those pieces are lining up um, and it's more the need for the state to kind of take the leadership on that um, and then if each of the pieces, like your piece from Chicago to Joliet, keep pushing on that really hard, have the folks working on chip pushing that, et cetera, uh, we could really make something exciting happen. Great. We have a, a question about the move away from petroleum-based fuels. I think though maybe we covered that one in the electrification question earlier. Uh, I'm going to move on to this one from Steve Terman. How or, or could private funding play a part in getting this done? Well, look at this. This will end up being a, a, a public-private partnership project all along the corridor. We know there'll be uh, lots of uh, private interest, private dollars in helping to build train stations, uh, businesses, uh, and um, other uh, other important. Uh, infrastructure along the way. Uh, and um, so we look forward to those opportunities. And uh, I, we know from our visits to 
uh, not only our own community of Peoria, but also to Utica and to Morris when we, the mayor and I went there and made the announcement. Uh, there were a lot of business people there that are very anxious for to, to get involved in either with a train station or with uh, small businesses or restaurants or boutique hotels or whatever. And I would add that uh, part of the study that we're about to take on um, that Secretary LaHood spoke to that's going to cost us somewhere between probably 250 and close to 300,000 is includes an economic impact study. Uh, so we will have some data, some information on what type of economic impact will this corridor uh, actually bring to not just the Peoria area, but those those cities and uh, municipalities along the way. And, 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 and Chris, anybody that's been to the normal Amtrak train station knows how transformative that has been and how many small businesses uh, just popped up as a result of the fact they built a new train station, let alone the Children's Museum. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we've got time for a couple more. Um, Joe Olson says that this project looks like a great example of a way to start leveraging funding from the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act that passed last fall uh, and asks if beyond, going beyond this project, does the Illinois DOT have a refreshed statewide rail program coming out that you, that you know of that would uh, include projects that connect to this one, but, but, uh, but go beyond it? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. We, uh, one of the things we would like to do is to in, in, increase the level of funding that IDOT actually has for doing real programs. Um, and we'll have some on, on what that means and how we can help make that happen um, in a future webinar. Because uh, it's, you know, at this point, we've got a good real, real program, but it needs to be a lot more robust than what it is today. So um, it looks like most of them have have been answered. Is there anything pressing, Chris, that you see? Um, there are a few more. Uh, I could do at least one more. Um, Michael Podgers had a follow-up question uh, saying, Chicagoans are often disconnected from projects and politics that occur, quote unquote, downstate. Uh, what, can, what can Chicagoans do to help Peoria and the communities along this route get this train operating sooner? You know, we haven't had a lot of discussions uh, with Chicago about this project, but we certainly intend to. So I think it begins with some discussions and talking about how Chicago also benefits from connecting to um, Central Illinois in a more efficient way um, in terms of uh, fast, frequent, affordable trains to and from uh, Peoria to Chicago and, and uh, vice versa. So I think it begins with a discussion, but we would hope to have Chicago support for this project. Chris, I'm a member of the Board of Trustees of Bradley University, and I'll tell you this, we know that a lot of students who live in Chicago, who come to Bradley, and we have a lot of Chicago area students will utilize this train. That's why we included them in our survey. And you know that's, that's just one aspect of, uh, of how we think uh, Chicago can can really benefit uh, from train service to Peoria, and and there are a lot of people from the Chicago suburban area that visit Starved Rock, and there will be a stop along the way at Starved Rock, which is one of the most popular state parks in Illinois. I was just there this summer. <laughs> <laughs> we have people that go to Chicago to to plays to different. Uh, you know, social, uh, recreational, artistic uh, museums, and so forth. So, certainly, uh, Chicago, you know, is open to receive more visitors from our area. Great. Well, Rick, why don't I, uh, with that, why don't I turn things back to you to say a few words just to wrap things up? Um, well, I just want to react real quickly. Uh, Steve has asked about political issues, and I want to make the point when things are important people debate them. And so there was a big debate in California on, on whether they were going to move forward with high-speed rail. 
Um, not only did they decide to move forward with high speed rail this spring, um, but they also massively uh, expanded their passenger rail program overall, not just high speed rail. Um, and that's what happens when there's a, a lively debate, things happen. And our role as advocates is to really help the folks who want to see the trains happen, um, make it happen and, and get that voice happening around the, the, uh, around the states and, around the, and all across the country. So uh, thank you guys again. Mayor, if you could just again, um, what do you think the next couple of steps are? I, um, I just wanna reiterate, did a very good job of saying, well, here's the steps we took um, and emphasis for the others who might wanna start a quarter program. What do you think the next like two or three steps are to make this a reality? So, you know, I think our next key step is getting accepted into the federal, the FRA's uh, corridor identification program so that we can be part of that pipeline that's been approved by the federal government. At that point, more planning, more engineering studies take place, uh, some technical assistance, and then those discussions that everybody's curious about with the, um, the owners of the rail lines. You know, those, it's premature really for us to do that until we get accepted into the um, FRA's um, corridor identification program. At that point, more discussions take place with Amtrak, with, with DOT, as well as with the, uh, the freight lines and the Federal Rail Administration. Excellent, thank you. And uh, Secretary, thank you for playing such a big part of this and um, playing a big part in the federal effort through the US high-speed rail coalition this past year. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about the, the bit of progress that we've had and want to keep pushing that. Um, is there anything you want to add as a, a parting remark? I think um, the only thing I would say is I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be, but I'm stunned at the amount of interest that came through in these questions. I, there are a lot of rail enthusiasts there in not not only watching this particular program but all over the country and we just you know they've been ignored too long and uh all of us around here are grateful that mara lee had the vision and the fortitude to campaign on this and now to carry it out and i'm proud to proud to be a partner with her and hopefully making it happen we'll see what happens Please allow me, uh, Rick, if I may, uh, just to publicly thank Secretary LaHood for his involvement. We would not be where we are as far ahead as we are without his expertise, without his passion and his involvement. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Right second. Absolutely. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for, for pushing this. Uh, we really appreciate your coming today. Uh, this will be posted on the YouTube channel uh, sometime over the weekend. Um, with, uh, with the slides. And uh, if, if you haven't yet, as one of the listeners, uh, made a donation, these programs are made possible through your contributions as a part of the association. You are helping to move uh, closer to having fast, frequent, and affordable trains across the entire country. So please go to highspeedrail.us and click that donate button if you enjoyed this program. Uh, but thank you all for joining us and we look forward to talking again. Thanks.